Vacuum grippers. <clears throat> we saw this picture before, but let's look at three different uh, uh, interesting pictures about a head on the top, on the bottom right. It has several, in circular fashion, several um, vacuum cups. The picture in the, in the center is a typical picture of a vacuum cap. And here is the robot as itself getting all vacuums, of, for getting vacuums for all the set of caps, creating vacuum, lifting the object up, pick and place. It's, it's basically for manufacturing. It has, um, uh, it's basically very flexible. However, there are some problems with it. Vacuum grippers are problematic in a, in, a, in a way that limits their type of applications. They can leave marks on, the, on some surfaces because of the high pressured, vacuum pressure between the cup and the body. When we release it, sometimes we see a mark, especially on a very sensitive uh, object. It compliant, so the, the reliability is decreased. For each a, a object to be picked and placed, we need to design a cup, a vacuum cap. So there is a custom design of a gripper per the object that we want to move. And obviously, there is a problem with compressed air. Compressed air is not necessarily all the time a fixed, has a fixed value. The value sometimes different. So the vacuum force is sometimes different. And in specific, specifically talking about lifting heavy type of objects, releasing or lowering the level of the vacuum might actually uh, cause the entire body to fall down, damage, etc., etc. So there's, there's some problems taking place in the vacuum gripping. However, they are very good in manufacturing for pick and place, basically doing only this particular job. Another type of, another family of applications of vacuum grippers is for uneven shaped parts, but they're different ones. It's not these vacuum caps you, uh, by means of uh, a polyester or a polypropylene vacuum caps. Here we're talking about a soft, spongy material. And the process goes like this. Look at the picture in the center. It has a four-step process. A gripper goes down together with the softy material. And it goes down and there is no any vacuum. It goes down on that object, the second one on the right, the second one from the left, I'm sorry. And it actually puts the object within it because it's very softy. Then the object gets hidden inside. Once it is hidden inside, a vacuum begins, begins to take place. But when a vacuum begins to take place, it basically holds that particular object inside the softy, spongy material. Once it is held inside, then as long as there's vacuum, we can lift it and doing pick and place operation. Uneven shapes, the, the pictures, the, the three pictures on the top right of the slide, we see a rectangular ones, we see some cylindrical ones, we see ball shapes. So these sponges can, can actually hide that object within them and it will be held there because a vacuum will actually put them inside very tightly. The pictures on the left hand side, different shapes and especially the, we can see it in picture B and picture C. When we want to lift a cylindrical type of, uh, of body, it has its sponge, but inside the sponge there is a kind of a propeller in the diameter, in a, a curve to, <coughs> to, to be, uh, which is adapted to the diameter of the cylinder to be picked up. And then not only that this adapter holds this cylinder in place, the sponge actually hug, give a big hug in, to the cylinder, pick it up and place it somewhere else. 